Thank you guys all for coming. Um, I wasn't sure how many people would show up, but I'm really pleased that we can have a good group here. We have a faculty and student panel um, that I really hope will start a real conversation with you guys. So we're going to start off uh, with some questions and some introductions, but I really want you guys to participate uh, and to, to share with us ideas about the world of gaming and whether that's online gaming or other forms of gaming. It's a big conversation today. So I'm very excited to have a panel that is going to educate me in the world of gaming, that's for sure. And I'm going to let them introduce themselves, and I've asked them just to sort of say their names and maybe sort of something that you know, has brought them into the world of gaming or, or how they identify with the world of gaming, just to set a little context um, for our discussion that emerges. So, um, maybe Dr. Smith, maybe you'd like to start? Hi, my name is Brian, and I'm a gaming addict. <laughs> hi, hi. <laughs> um, uh, I've been playing computer games since 1979, when my family bought its first computer, so that was 37 years ago. Uh, I started playing online computer games back in 1988, uh, so that's been for 28 years now. Um, I am not, uh, I know there's probably going to be issues that come up today, or in the discussion hopefully come up, uh, that have to do with things like psychology and sociology, uh, and I am not an expert in either of those fields uh, on this topic. However, I am a social scientist. Uh, and I pay attention to the community and issues surrounding my hobby. Uh, you know, I, I relax with uh, the website Dama Sutra, if you know, uh, it's like the, you know, it's a game developer's uh, website, uh, things like that. So I keep up uh, with what's going on uh, in the gaming world. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have a microphone if you want to use it. Anyway. Oh, I don't, I don't need a microphone. Thank you. Though. Somebody might, but I see guys don't. Sit around, just hang um, on to it. <laughs> I don't think I do. Do I need a microphone, anybody? Okay, I didn't think so. Um, I'm Elizabeth Gernack. I'm, I'm in the chemistry department here. And uh, I do play some online gaming. I do some online gaming, but mostly I'm a board gamer. And I refuse to tell you when I started playing board games. <laughs> um, you can think about whatever time frame you want with that. Uh, but I do a lot of board gaming, tabletop board gaming. And um, RPG um, dice rolling games and some online games. I do not play a lot of MMORPGs, but I do play like Skyrim and that sort of thing and Dragon Age. Um, some other, uh, my favorite games are online would be games that you can play cooperatively with other people. Um, but uh, that's strategy board games are very real. Um, what I played the most. Thank you, Dr. Gerner. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, okay. My name is Victoria. Um, I'm an English major, and I play mainly computer games, which really is just The Sims and <laughs> Xbox. I play a lot of different types of games. Um, I hate puzzle games, though. I'm not very good at those. I don't like math. Um, <laughs> I play like uh, Call of Duty, like Black Ops 3, Black Ops 2, um, Fallout 4, Fallout 3, those types of games. Dragon Age, I play that. Um, the Witcher, those types of games. I like those types of games. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Thank you, Victoria. Brianna? Can y'all hear me? Or am I going to need the mic? <laughs> Nobody responded. Okay. So um, I'm Brianna Brizendine. I am undeclared because I am awesome. <laughs> and uh, the type of games I play basically range from any type of PC or mobile phone game to any like PlayStation 2 or 3 game. Yeah, I play retro PlayStation 2. But um, I'm not really big into gun games like Call of Duty and stuff, but I will play pretty much anything that has a really good storyline or some nice art work to it. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to use the mic because I'm special. <laughs> like, um, hey, um, my name's Ash, uh, and I probably stole that from Ash from Pokemon. Uh, I've been playing video games since 
like not as young as most people. Like when you usually hear ga about gamers, uh, I started playing, really getting into video games when I was 13 and my dad got me my copy of Pokemon Pearl. And let me tell you, that has started a very expensive joyride. <laughs> um, I mostly, I don't really do MMOs, I'm terrified of them. Um, I really like RPGs like everybody else. Uh, you know, Bioware games, Mass Effect, Dragon Age. I'm not really that into shooters, but Borderlands has been changing that, uh, along with like Fallout 4. Uh, <laughs> I've been really trying to like broaden my horizon. Horizons, that's a word, guys. Horizons with games, but I, I really like to think that like I'm just a gamer. I love everything about games. I love theorizing, I love talking about them, and that's it, I guess. Thank you, Ash. I'm the only special. Uh, my name is Mark Laughlin. I'm in the music department. And along with uh, Dr. Smith, I've been playing probably since 77, 78, around that time. Uh, for me, Pong was the first one. Very exciting. That's right. You should listen to the soundtrack of Pong. A lot of good music in Pong. That's pretty much it. Um, from that, it was uh, Atari 2600, ColecoVision. So I was more of a console player. Um, it was Nintendo, Super Nintendo, uh, PlayStation, PlayStation 2, 3, Wii, whatever it was. Um, up until probably about uh, 10 years ago, uh, my wife uh, is a hardcore PC gamer, and um, she kind of got me hooked on PC games, uh, MMORPGs. Uh, I always kind of like to say I can only handle one in my life, so World of Warcraft is it. Um, so, uh, and uh, along with uh, not only just gaming, also teach a uh, video game music class, uh, which we started a couple of years ago, and uh, it's going to begin in the spring where we actually have the opportunity to meet in game, have class sessions in game in real time. So it's pretty exciting when you're sitting there having a conversation about music. And half your party is dead. <laughs> so the uh, wait, what happened? Oh, oh man! All right, let's go try to save them real quick, and then we'll come back. Um, but I've been playing you know, quite a while, and uh, not as much as you know recently, public work and stuff. But uh, and you have to do that to afford your subscription uh, to play. But uh, you know, along with Dr. Smith, Dr. Garnett, and I. Uh, or PC console and board game, so hopefully we'll be able to add a little something to the conversation. And we should add, uh, Mrs. Dr. Laughlin is a professor in the sociology department, and she would be here, but she has a conference, so she's here with us in spirit, That's right? right. <laughs> so, how many of you guys out there play some kind of you know, online game or other are, are participants in gaming culture? Raise your hands high. Pretty good numbers here. Now, I am the person who has no contact whatsoever. I was not somebody who was raised with any kind of online connections, didn't sort of get that bug. So I'm gonna be moderating this discussion from clearly the, the, the position of being blind. Um, and I'm really gonna ask you guys to participate with me, right? I'm gonna throw out some general questions to our panel, but I really want our audience to participate as well. So. If you have comments you want to make or questions you want to ask, just raise your hand high. I'm going to come up with the microphone so that you can participate in this discussion as well. Okay? So, how many people are aware that there has been discussion in the media about gender harassment in online cultures? Okay, <laughs> good. So, we actually have a, a recognition of that. Um, there's a lot of history here, and there's an argument, and I would actually, this is a, a sort of an argument that I'm putting out there that I would like to see you know, how my panel responds or how um, you all respond. But there's an argument that the rise of harassment in gaming culture has actually led to a decline of women in the STEM fields um, in recent years. The proportion of women in STEM fields uh, in earlier years was actually higher than it is today, apparently. So, um, if we sort of consider that, um, has that been your experience? 
to my panel, whoever wants to answer this, of has it been your experience that you've seen forms of online harassment? And if not, maybe why do you think that might be? Um, and then to the audience as well, how might that shape your participation? Online harassment, anybody? Ash. I'm gonna use the mic again because it's fashion. Um, like, there's a reason why I don't really like MMOs. I'm not going to say that what I experienced was like the absolute worst of what you can get from them, because that's not true. I'm a coward. I left the moment it happened. I was. I remember it very clearly. I was 12. Does anybody know about those adorable little anime MMOs like Mabinogi, like stuff like that, the cutesy ones? I found a free one. I, I probably put like 57 million viruses on my mom's computer. I don't know how I downloaded it. But um, I remember I was in the starting area and I feel like there's also, a, along with like the harassment, there's also a lot of newbie harassment in MMOs because everybody doesn't really have all the patience for like new players. So I was new, I was 12, so I was running around trying to make friends. And I remember there was this person who, they weren't really a person, they were like a minotaur or something. I was like a cutesy little mouse. I ran up to them and I was like, hi. And I will never forget just the deluge of, if that's the proper word, of just rude words in the chat, I don't remember all of them and I'm not gonna repeat them for y'all to hear because my mom's gonna probably see this and I don't want her to hear me say swears, even though she knows I swear, but you know, you, there's a difference. And I just felt so bad. Like I know they're, and I hope I'm not taking up the chat from my fellow panel people, but I know there are people who probably experience to a much more extreme degree, but when you're 12, and when you're like so fragile and like susceptible to stuff like that, I just feel like that was really upsetting. I, I don't, I don't know. Anyone Anybody else have these experiences? Yeah. Brianna? Yeah. I'm gonna use the mic too, because it looks cool. <laughs> but um, for me, like I was about 12 or 13 when I first started doing the online games, like intense online game stuff too. I tended to play more social games like Swinky or IMVU, which after downloading IMVU, I realized that it wasn't originally for what I thought it was. Oh my God. <laughs> if you guys know what it is, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But I just remember being like, I loved being able to edit like different characters and stuff and outfits, and that's what I really loved about it. And I remember I got one to like somebody's server or something once and they were furries. I didn't know what a furry was. I found out what a furry was. But, um, and that was cool and stuff, but then stuff escalated really quickly and then I just remember like getting yelled at because I was young and I didn't understand what was going on according to them, even though I totally knew what was going on. I just didn't know what to say. And people like basically I got kicked off the server because they weren't allowed to be who they were because the people who were running the server liked me they liked having an actual child there to keep people like cool and stuff and not say what they wanted to say and yeah okay that's kind of creepy yeah <laughs> um, anyone else either in the audience or on my panel want to talk about any experiences of online harassment or gender pressure politics I'm sure. Sure. It's yeah. Ash. Um, oh. said, like, yeah, they're getting harassed because you know you were a new player or whatnot. Is it because you were a new player or the other players knew you were a female and that's just kind of your target? Mm -hmm. Well, that is a fantastic question. Can I ask your name? Misha. Well, that's a fantastic question, Misha. Um, I feel like it was both because a lot of the words he said involved uh, parts of the female anatomy. Uh, I don't even know how he could discern that because the little cutesy mouse I was playing, it's, it's hard to tell. This is an anime game, it's real hard to tell what that was. But um, I kind of feel like that leads back to a lot of the um, feelings of gaming being still a boys club, even though video games are like really out in the mainstream. 
everybody can pick up, like everybody can go to Walmart right now and get a 3DS. Or everybody can, I mean, it'll take you some money to save up for like a console. But everybody can get a Steam account, everybody can get a console, and everybody can play. But it feels like so many people want to hold on to that mentality that video games only mean one thing and are only for one sort of person. And it makes it difficult for people of any age to really get into it. Um, like, there's also another thing about it, like I mentioned earlier, really like Pokemon. The fandom, if I can use that word without anybody cringing so hard, for Pokemon is insanely contentious. And it's really weird how a video game that's, no lie, mainly for children, it's a children's game. The ESRB rating is up to 12, I believe. But it's so insane how aggressive and angry people can get over something like that just because they have this nostalgic feeling of it from their childhood. And I still am really confused by it. I've seen abuse over it up till today. Like right now, I just got off my computer from seeing someone compa complain that a per particular uh, kind of Pokemon, does anyone know about Pokemon? Does anyone? Who knows what a starter is? Okay, so for you guys that don't know, starter Pokemon, you get three Pokemon at the very beginning, so you'll have one. A, there are different types, but it's fire, water, and grass. The new, does anyone know about the Brion discourse? Who doesn't like Brion? You don't like them. <laughs> oh my gosh. But I'm going to be nice. Anyway, um, Brielle looks particularly effeminate. And in fact, the entire line, there have been leaks for the design, and the final line for it, because Pokemon Evolve, is a mermaid. So many people have said so many nasty anti women and homophobic slurs just because this one particular Pokemon is effeminate. And I hope I'm not taking this up from anyone for taking extra time, but it just astounds me that even games for children aren't safe from people being angry and nasty over something as small as a particular gender or gender presentation of something. And I'm, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Dr. Smith, to add to that? Yeah. Uh, to the subject of online harassment, um, it's the internet. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I dare you to find a part of the internet that does not have that kind of behavior occurring, and then add to it the potential to have the internet being competitive, at a competitive situation in many circumstances. It doesn't take a competitive situation to get harassment in the online world. Oh, yeah, but imagine the places where there is competitive aspects to it, and then put in place the internet. Uh, so I don't think uh, the harassment uh, that happens in the gaming world is less than what you could find in, say, the YouTube comment sections of, you know, anything from politics sections to music videos to whatever you have. It's ugly, ugly, ugly. Um, and that's an indication of where our society is rather than a particular aspect, in my opinion, of uh, the gaming world or the gaming community. It's a reflection of what's happening in the rest of the world. Then. And then you know, oh, I was going to say, you never know when that that uh, harassment is some 20-year-old Russian kid in eastern Siberia who speaks English perfectly because he's been watching English TV his entire life. I was actually going to ask Dr. Gurnak, because she does multiple forms of gaming, to maybe compare and contrast her experiences, you know, thinking about the context of the internet versus other forms of, of gaming cultures, and, and how that competitive spirit maybe comes out in different ways. Um, yeah, um, I do not play any real MMORPGs, and I don't, I don't, um, okay, when I was 13, didn't have the internet, so um, the gaming that I uh, played online is, is not really subject to, I have never had an incident of any kind of harassment, but I don't do uh, massive interaction with people out there. Um, I will say that I have a large history with board gaming around the country, and um, I cannot say 
there's been a lot of harassment, but and and today, if you go to a gaming or popular culture convention, um, you look around, there are lots of women there. But um, back in when I went to uh, Gen Con, when it was in uh, Milwaukee, um, I went there and there would be 20,000 people there and probably a thousand of them were women. And um, that was a little different. It wasn't because of the nature of who I am and the fact that I'm in a, uh, what was at the time at least, a predominantly male field. Anyway, it didn't bother me, in fact, when I was 20, I rather liked that there were 20 guys to every woman at these conventions. <laughs> um, the, the, the more, more recently, though, going to some conventions, it's very hard to have credibility as a woman gamer. And um, I do teach a lot of games. And um, I've run several games at Gen Con and also at um, Dragon Con and things like that. And I have a hard time sometimes with male gamers who simply do not believe me, who literally, this happened. I don't, I don't know what to do. And I say, do this. This is how this mechanic works. This was, by the way, Descent, which is a board game. Anyway, it's a dungeon crawl. And they, said, they looked at me and they said, well, I'm going to find out from someone who knows. They went to the next table to ask who, somebody who's now my friend, his name is Will, how do you do this? And he said, I'll find out for you. He came over to my table, asked me how to do it. I said, it's in the top, upper left corner of page 16 in the rule book. This is what it is. He said, thank you. He went back to his table and told the guy how to play the, the part. And um, I got that kind of you know, treatment at conventions playing board games not so much now but 10 years ago or so yeah so I, I really haven't been um, I have not been offended by um, people who have harassed me so much except for some things like that what offends me more is simply the portrayal of women in games which okay. is a little annoying right so let's actually hold on to that there's one more question and that's good. where we want to go next I wanted to, yeah, to ask Dr. Laughlin to share his experiences. Uh, compared to your wife's experiences for us, too. Yeah, because we actually, um, she and I, you know, we game as much as we can together, and we, we talk about it. And she was a PC gamer long before I was. Um, she, you know, Red Dead Redemption was my gateway drug to World of Warcraft. So there's that. Um, but she was playing a long time ago, and this kind of goes along with what Dr. Smith had said, and to uh, agree with him. Um, and I asked her if she had ever had any sort of experience. And she said that she really hadn't. And she plays uh, female roles, male roles. Um, and actually there's a conference this past summer that I was uh, talking to several folks that were kind of in that you know, online gaming world. And they had not really had that experience um, because they played female characters, they played male characters, so you really didn't know, if it, you know in real life you know, who the person was. Um, it, was it came more about skill. Now, if you went into some sort of big raid or dungeon and you didn't know what you were doing, yeah, you're gonna get harassed. Male, female, cat, dog, whoever's playing, bot, whatever you got, right? And it, it came out to be more of a skill level. And you were, you were gonna get, you know, just beat down and called all sorts of things before they kicked you out, you know? Um, but as far as you know, that, that over over looming concept, she she hadn't really experienced that. I hadn't seen it because I play male and female characters. You know, I just like to look at ones that look awesome. You know, it doesn't matter what gender role, whatever they are, if they look like they're going to kick your ass, that's the one I want. That's the one that I want to be a part of. Now, keep in mind too that if you look at some of the stats, um, and I always like to check out the Entertainment Software Association. Uh, every year they run stats on type of players that are playing, uh, they run stats on you know genders, that sort of thing. So for 2015, um, it kind of skews a little bit, where they were seeing 59% of the online gaming was male, where the other 41% were female. Now, a few years ago, it was like 51, 49 male, female. Um, now, also keep in mind the average age of the player. 
when you think about online or uh, yeah, really online playing, what do you think the average age of a player would be? Thirty-five. 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 Average age of the player. Twenty-two. Twenty-one. Twenty-four. 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 Twenty-four.
And that's really striking to me because that means that, you know, you can actually be very competitive and develop your skills, and it actually means you might get more harassment in the culture, yes. right? Yes. And I would actually... If you're female. Ideally, think that they might be the opposite, right? That, you know, essentially you could, you know, show off your skills and people would respect that. And they do, but it's on, you know, all of these things, it's, it's kind of like the Neil deGrasse Tyson thing, you know, it's like, on average, this right. is what is occurring. Mm -hmm. that, perfect, that study makes perfect sense, because you said earlier that, you know, the internet reflects our society, and we see that very thing happen in our society, and then a woman rises to a certain position, well, what happens? There's backlash. So it makes, the study makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. And that's one reason why I don't trust it. <laughs> um, because, honestly, it is. Um, it's because I know there is a reflection in that. Uh, that theory does reflect actual society, and so it's a, a well-established understanding of gender issues in our culture. Um, therefore, I'm assuming when they went looking for the explanation for this behavior, they had in the back of their head this understanding of how society in general works. And therefore, I'm not entirely trusting of that, you know, wow, yeah, their methodology. Wow, it reflect, but I said, like I said, I actually didn't dig into the methodology. I don't have time. So what I'm actually doing is that we actually have a need for some research projects out there. <laughs> Test these theories, maybe. Uh, Dr. Brian, and then we'll get back to the I have a follow-up question. Since the internet reflects our society, I'm wondering what you all think about. How much does internet anonymity play into the harassment um, online, if the internet reflects real attitudes, it does the, the level of harassment, it, is it exacerbated by the anonymity? Yeah. Who wants to tackle that big one? <laughs> Do people get to say what they really think because they're bit on the screen? I have one word, trolls. <laughs> ah. <laughs> South Park. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, People feel they can say whatever they want to, you know. Over, you know, and, and those of you that, um, you know, for us that have taught online, same thing with students sending emails. I mean, teaching online class, they would send something in the email that I dare say I've never seen or heard in real life. Okay, maybe because I have a shaved head and goatee, I don't know. <laughs> but they've never said that to me in my face or something like that. So, and then you have those that are just going to be there just to be go trolls. At least in my experience, where you're just like, if you're playing, you go, oh, you see this person log on, go, here we go with Tracy Jack. All right, let's just cut off, mute this, because here we go. Then we're going to find those folks that's going to aggravate it and perpetuate it. Okay. Let's get to Eva and then back to our panel. Eva? Um, Helen, do you ever feel the, I guess, the urge to engage in online harassment? Like, you know, you're not going to be able to I've seen folks go for, you know, I, it seemed like days, you, you, log, you, you log in and they're going at it and go, okay, well, I'm just going to play, mm -hmm. right? And then you log out, you log back in 12 hours later, they're still going at it. It's like, do you have a job? Yeah, you have a job. <laughs> go to class, you know, do some, read a book, do something. So ask me to and then back up to the top here. Like, I was going to, like, comment on that. Like, I have actually done that on Omega. And Troll. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> no. I would never, I, I can't be mean to people ever. Like, any game with morality in it, like Mass Effect, like any game with morality, I, I can't be a renegade shepherd. I burst into tears crying. Like, it's it's awful, but anyway, I um like anybody like do you know how Omega works? Does anybody know how Omega works? Like you sift through people to find tags. Like you say, use tags to find someone to talk about, talk to somebody about. Um, I really love Dragon Age. I'm a massive, massive fan of Dragon Age. The end of Dragon Age Inquisition had me screaming. I can't wait to go to Deventer if anyone knows what I mean, but. I wanted to talk to somebody about theories. I'm a huge person about theories. The moment I finish a video game, it's time to talk about it for the next six months. 
uh, you can't walk away. It's fine. Get some food. We're going to be here like until the winter comes. It's okay. But I tried to rationalize with somebody who I think they didn't think I finished the game because they just kept screaming spoilers at me. And I'm not going to repeat them because play Dragon Age Inquisition. All of you. I don't care if you've never played. What do you mean? No? Dragon Age Origins is the only good one. <gasps> oh. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Like, um, <laughs> <laughs> Origins is good, but the other ones are good too. But anyway, um, I they just kept screaming spoilers at me, like da 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 da. I'm not gonna say the spoilers, play the game, da da da. And as much as I tried to like say like, dude, why are you doing this, dude? Like it was three o'clock in the morning. I had a headache. I just wanted peace, but I was curious, and I kept trying and trying. And some people. I kind of feel like some people, when they have, like you said, the anonymity of the internet, I don't know whether or not that's their true self. I have met actual trolls as friends. I don't talk to them anymore. But I have met actual people who have trolled online, who, scr who are the people who scream the nasty things in the chat. And they say that it's some form of release. It's some form of getting out pent up tension. But when you're calling somebody the C word, or the D word, or the F word, or the Q word, or whatever kind of word you want to use, that is not releasing tension. You're being a D bag. Stop. But whatever. I'm sorry. Thank you, Ash. Um, comment or question from the top? Yeah. I was going to say, like, but I feel like people, you can't really ask anyone why they're doing something because most of the time you already know the answer to that. And it's because they don't have to face you face to face. They don't know who you are. That chances are you're never, ever, ever going to know who they are. You're never going to talk to them. And it's like a once in a million kind of thing. It's like people squash ants all the time. So that's kind of how they feel. They feel like there's a big shoe coming through the air to squish a giant ant. And that's what you are to them. And it's just like, I think it's kind of ridiculous to have to waste my time to ask. I think it's kind of ridiculous that they waste their time to try and get up under my skin when, like, reality is they're the cowards that can't go out in the day and be like, hey, yeah, I said that. Yeah. So, if it takes essentially a kind of, you know, ability to rise above the ugliness of the trolls, um, in some aspects, let's get back to that issue of representation politics. Um, what do you actually see in the video games that either frustrates you or inspires you? And we'll go to our panel first and then go out here. What kinds of representations do we actually have? I kind of know. Let's actually get something new and then we'll come back to you. Oh, well, I would just like to say that <clears throat> physics cannot be ignored. <laughs> <laughs> and often it is. <laughs> and um, uh, it, it's, it actually, um, kind, it sort of amuses me that um, uh, in RPGs, and this is board games and D&D &D and, um, you know, uh, online role playing games and everything else, for many, many decades, women were um, scantily clad, gravity-defying Barbie dolls that um, I found sort of offensive. Um, there's actually, it's actually getting better in a lot of ways. They're at least more clothed. Um, I guess that's all. I just kind of get offended when a guy has on, you know, a nice set of armor, but a, you know, a chick buys this, buys some armor, and it's like, just not going to really protect her. Bikini armor well. doesn't work. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> female bikini doesn't really isn't as effective as you might think. So, mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't know. I, I just, uh, I will say, however, that. The games that I have played that are role-playing games, the women st stat-wise are equal to the men. I mean, they're just stat-wise, there's not a difference. It's just the way. This is the outward, the image of it. Right. Kristen, on the top. Well, 
on them starting to call it good, but I like when people are like good sports. Like if we're on the same team and they might get killed or something, they'd be like, oh, we're on the corner, so I don't get killed. And then we can like do it together. And when somebody talking negative to me, like I don't, I don't mind. I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna kill you. So <laughs> <laughs> even if they're on your team. Well, I hope they're not talking. <laughs> So you've got some good strategies right. to take into the game with you, right? Uh, other comments? Secret. Um, I just wanted to comment on what you had said about the clothing for different vendors. Do you think the reason of that, um, well, the cost of it is because the society has such an impact or an effect on the gaming system and how we see the different players dress? I'm sorry, I can't. I, I think the question is, is it representative of how society is pressuring the games to be? Yes. Um, that could be. Uh, there's a, <clears throat> I have a very unscientific theory that has a, the fact that historically all of the RPG came from a genre um, of D and D that was really geared towards young boys, and um, that that sort of got brought up with all of the uh, all the games that we are playing now. Uh, but recently, women have become far more, as Dr. Laughlin pointed out, far far more a part of the picture of gaming throughout all genre of gaming, and I think that we're starting to, two things are happening. Women are simply there more and starting to make their presence felt, which is changing the image of the female in the games. And um, art has become extremely important in all aspects of gaming. And in fact, I would say that I would credit art uh, gaming both online gaming and board gaming as a, a sort of an impetus for sort of a renaissance of, of art in our culture today. So um, uh, the graphic design and art and everything, and there's so many people coming into that, it's becoming more important. And I think that pe that, that and the fact that there are more women in, um, involved in gaming throughout is sort of bringing a better image um, to the uh, female image into the game. But we can't stop because there's still some really astoundingly bad <laughs> representations of the females. Dr. Brown? Because there are so many women involved in gaming culture, why then do you all think it's so hard for women to break into game design? Um, go look at who is enrolled in computer science classes. Um, if you look at uh, the statistics of employment, which again, that, I feel like I'm shilling for Gamma Sutra. The Gamma Sutra website uh, regularly features things on because it's basically people in the game design world trying to break into the game uh, business or the game developers talking amongst themselves on that website. Um, you have a strong uh, skewing towards male uh, employees in game development uh, towards the programming, like pure programming. When I say programming, I mean just like at the actual code. Uh, sound design, uh, graphic design, but that stuff requires computer programming skills. And then it slowly skews back towards eventually like 50-50 with just employees being hired to the company. And I think a lot of where that comes from, I, I have you know, just one solid piece of information and then something I suspect. The solid piece of information is there is a skewing towards men simply going into computer science majors in college. Uh, the programming skews male. So if that changes, I'm sure it would change in the computer game world. On top of that, this is just a theory I've developed 
about why that is happening, why you see like it's literally something like ninety seven percent of game programmers are men. You know, ninety six percent to ninety eight percent of sound and graphic designers are men. Um, my theory is that you have to be passionate about games to be a computer programmer and go into the gaming biz developing business because it's really bad. It's a bad job. It's not going to make you money. It's going to pay you far, far less and you're going to have to work in far worse conditions than most of the other types of jobs that are out there for computer programmers. You're going to get much higher pay. You're going to have much better working conditions. It's really bad. I mean, you know, it's like slaves in the trenches type of bad. Uh, arts and science professor type of salary, bad. Uh, right? um, compared to really good paying salaries and high pay, you know. And so of the women that get computer programming skills, you have to make a conscious decision to go into game development because it's a passion. You have to give up on higher salaries, better job conditions, to go into that particular little niche of the programming world. And I, if you go back in time, we have been skewing more and more women gamers and girl, young girl gamers. That's been increasing rapidly, but if you go back in time, it starts looking like early days of RPGs and board games, right? Um, and so you have few, a small, much smaller population of people who were female gamers and then said, wow, I really want to make computer games for a living. Go in, become a computer scientist. You know, they take the computer science class, they become a programmer. And so some small segment of that get, you know, go out into the world, become computer programmers, and then they look at the job salaries and there are all these places that desperately want women to come in and work for them because, believe it or not, the word diversity is a really great thing and businesses don't do it just for any PC reasons. Diversity actively helps your business. Diversity actively helps you with your projects. And so they're desperate for women programmers to come in because it provides different perspectives. It, it does lots of good things. And so they're going out into the field and they may not have had that passion because when they were kids, women didn't gain quite as much. And they're incredibly in demand for these much higher paying jobs. So honestly, I think it's the overall society and women in STEM fields, et cetera, as what in particular computer science that is driving that, rather than what is often very bad working conditions for women in some of these game developing companies. They point to the fact that some of these are such boys clubs. I mean, it's just ugly sexism in, uh, inside of, you know, it, it would be like, a walking poster for sexual harassment, you know, in a workplace. If the, you know, and again, you can be sexually harassed as a man if you're a man by a man, just with them talking about women, right? Yes, but nevertheless, those environments are definitely not conducive to women wanting to stick around. But they're not applying in the first place. They're not coming to look to work for that company in the first place. So I don't think that's what's driving them away from the business. Um, it's not like the working conditions are driving away. They're just not ever applying for the job in the first place. I have, a, I have a big long question on this point, and you guys can attack it from any direction you like. I'm admitting it, I'm just kind of throwing it out here. We know that young boys and young girls seem to display the same interest and same aptitude for math and science up till about puberty. And then there's a shift, right? Where young girls are often backing away that might shape essentially the, the stream into college majors, right? So knowing that pattern, which has been studied a fair amount, um, Are there experiences that you might use as ways to empower young girls, you know, to resist new kinds of pressures when they're teenagers so that they continue on into STEM fields if they're so inclined? Um, and then sort of picking up on Mark's point, when you said that you can actually switch roles and play any role, what would happen if we actually imagined essentially a kind of encouragement for more men to take on female roles? Would that actually be a way to kind of continue the fluidity that seems to exist before puberty and to encourage a broader, more diverse field of teenage and college students who are interested in these issues? I told you it was really big. <laughs> so, anyone want to attack anything on that? <laughs>
Okay, I'll say something. I've been kind of quiet because I've just been listening what everyone has to say. Um, you know, growing up as a kid, I mean, things are changing. We are in the 21st century, but obviously there's still a lot of sexism. Um, you know, little girls are supposed to play with dolls, be nurturing, and so maybe if you grow up like that and you think you're supposed to be nurturing and you're supposed to go into those kind of professions, you know, be a nurse, be a teacher, or something like that. And then males, uh, little boys are taught, you know, play with Legos, build things, be a creator. And so they want to go in and create things like video games or construction, things like that, where there's not a lot of women present because we aren't really pressured. Well, not pressured, but we aren't encouraged. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. We aren't really encouraged to go into those types of professions. We aren't encouraged to play with those types of toys. You know, when I was a little kid, I had Legos. My parents were like, are you sure you want to play with Legos? You don't want to play with Barbie dolls? Like, no, I want to play with Legos. Like, why do boys have to play with Legos? I want to build a castle or something like that. And so I feel like there's a pressure for women not to go into, um, there's pressure for women not to go into, like, game developing or anything that's something where you would invent something or you'd be a creator. You don't want to do that because you're taught that's wrong. You're taught that you're supposed to be nurturing. You're supposed to go into nurturing professions. So. Mm -hmm. Any other sort of comments or thoughts about how we could encourage young women to either follow a passion and end up in a STEM field or to find forms of, of support in online communities that can be dangerous and difficult? I will, s oh. I will say that it's not just STEM fields. There's, mm -hmm. It's true that um, it's true that for um, uh, game development, uh, video game development, it, it's through uh, graphic design and uh, computer science. That's true. Um, and that is primarily, uh, that's, it is mostly men who, or males that, that, that go in through that. That's, there's no doubt about that. But there's a lot of other places in the gaming the creation of game that, that women could go that are more artistic or um, creative in different ways. Um, there's a lot of writing, there's a lot of um, just art and design and a lot of um, narrative structures if you play those um, RPG games. Yeah, the, the levels get better as you go towards marketing. Yeah. So marketing is like three quarters male or something like that, don't quote me on that. But, uh, uh, yeah. um, and then like writing, it gets down to like 70% male or something, yeah. so it's like so drifting in that direction. There's there's a lot of ways that women could could come in. And um, I know that, that um, there, there's been an issue about women in the STEM fields for a long time. I've been in the STEM fields for, you know, since before most of you have been playing video games. But um, the, um, and I have never noticed, you know, um, here at GSW, of course, three of the four faculty in chemistry are female. Um, most of our majors are female. And we don't have, I don't see a gender, uh, a gender split like, like that at all. Um, I, will know, I will say that my un- unsubstantiated um, uh, observation, completely not scientific at all, is that women tend to be far more practical in their decisions towards their upcoming careers than men are. Mm -hmm. Men want to do what they want to do. Women want to do what they think they should or have to do. And um, that I have noticed. And I think that's probably that could probably be borne out with that sort of thinking. Men don't mind going and working in the back of a garage for 20 bucks a week to build a, board, uh, a video game where a woman is going, but I can't live on that. And so they go somewhere else. So I don't know. Well, what I just do, all of you have about how we could either encourage young women to participate openly in an online culture, or gaming culture generally, or to think about the importance of technology and STEM fields generally. Ariana? Well, I think that uh, if more of the girls have access to certain programs that um, may exist in the online, like 
I just wanted to say something about the graphic designer thing. Um, I was in, I've always been in graphic design classes like all throughout high school. And a majority of the people that are in it are actually girls. And we tend to like, I don't know if it's just because my school, the way we taught it, um, it was more on a professional level than most high schools and colleges would teach it. But we always did competitions and stuff for like, real life companies would come in and they'd ask us to make them something and we do like a competition throughout the entire classroom or the several classrooms and stuff and the girls would always win because the boys just didn't have like a certain finesse to them the way they did it and I've just seen more girls go through the actual graphic arts thing than boys will stick to it. You have real computer science classes in high school? Yeah. Well, we have like... <laughs> oh, no. Oh, okay. man. We, we, were, we were so thrilled when we got the TRS-80s into our school. <laughs> they, we could do print commands. Right. <laughs> Dr. Wilson, you had a comment there? Oh, I see. Yeah, it was kind of going back to uh, what Ms. Millen had said. Uh, there are a lot of programs that are free, like Game Maker. UCLA has a Game Maker program. There's also Sploder which is really good for like, especially the younger, uh, younger folks. And I've used it in my classes too, like even for like music theory classes where they have to go in and create, or you have to create your own video game and then you have to write the soundtrack to it. You have to come up with the music to, to make it fit. Since I'm music, that's gonna be my, my spin on it. But there are quite a few out there that could get women, men, whomever at an earlier age used to designing and trying it. And, you know, um, I've had my kids do it, you know, and they come up, you know, my daughter comes up with some wickedly difficult, and she's just laughing the whole time every time I die. You know, so like, yeah, I do it again. Ha ha, I do it again. How did you, what, what is that? I don't worry about it, just try it again, you know. Um, so there are a lot of programs out there now, you know, because of access with the internet and stuff, that, you know, at a younger age, if teachers and parents and stuff that are, you know, familiar with it and are aware of it, you know, part of that too is having their antennas up and knowing what you know they're into and being able to foster that in a positive way. Let me actually ask you, um, and I'm going to ask this a general question, you can answer it any way you like. Why would you actually encourage young women to go into gaming culture, either board games, any kind of competitive gaming culture? What are some of the things that you think might be positive lessons? or a positive kind of stimulation or, or opportunity that might come out of that? They're really fun. They're really fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they're really fun. And what else? Well, I'm a board gamer, and I'm going to speak about board gaming. Very briefly, I promise. I will not go on for more than two or three hours. Um, they're really fun. Um, they are interactive. You can actually engage in a board game, you have actual physical people there in the room with you, and you are interacting with them in a meaningful manner. It also, it builds history between those people. So I have um, games that I have played with people, and that, that time, that game space that we shared is now part of our history. Uh, games can be a lot of fun, um, exciting, adventure-wise. They can develop strategic thinking if you're, um, depending on the game that you're playing. Um, help te teach you how to play um, and interact cooperatively with other people with a very diverse 
set of skills and, and knowledge. So they can do a lot of things, and I would, I would recommend that uh, everybody, women, men, children, adults, minotaurs, and trolls, all play games together because it's fun, mostly. Okay. Okay. Ash. You want to Your turn, Ash. <laughs> okay. Um, I kind of feel like that women and pretty much honestly everybody should be encouraged by video games. Like I, I've said, I said earlier, any of you guys remember, I, my first real video game, real video game, was Pokemon Pearl. And I don't think I'll ever forget it. It's weird how quickly and how easily you can sink into the narrative of the video game. And Pokemon is really simple. It's a children's game, and I still find myself getting sucked into it, even now, at 22. In fact, I'm pretty much bouncing off the walls, waiting for Pokemon Sun and Moon on the 16th of the next month, but I think there's that feeling when you play a video game, and I'm not just talking about an MMO, and, and maybe even an MMO, that you're not you. Like, I'm not Ash Campbell, I'm suddenly Jane Shepard, and I'm fighting against the Reapers. I'm not Ash Campbell, I'm Elana like Lavellan, and I'm trying to stop Corypheus. I'm, I'm sinking into that feeling uh, and escaping, and maybe for some people it could be negative, and some people it could be positive. Like, you become more, and I don't know how else to describe it. It's just that feeling of connecting with characters that you know aren't real, but you just grow so close to them. And it's like reading a book or seeing the best movie in the world, but you're impacting the world. You're a part of it. You're the one who slayed that dragon. You're the one who saved the princess. And I just can't describe that feeling of getting to the credits and not even realizing that you're crying. And I know this sounds weird, but that's happened to me. Like, I don't know. Brianna, what sort of inspired you to play games? I have to agree with what Ash says, that feeling when you not you when you get to be somebody else when you think in a different mindset you act in a different mindset that's what really drives me i love role playing and being able to make a character that has a completely different personality from me and they do things completely different because it really opens your eyes to how others act and what they do and the meanings behind certain things Victoria? I agree. Um, it's fun to just, you know, I'm not stressed out about classes. I can just sit there and I can be someone else. I don't have assignments that are due at midnight. I don't have to stay up all night cramming for the test that I forgot I had because I had a bunch of other stuff. You know, I can just play the game, be somebody else, and I can win. I get to be like, you know, if you play like Fable, you get to be the king or the queen, whatever. I get to rule that. Everybody's my peasants, you know, my kingdom. But, and then I come to school and I'm down here. I just gotta do my classes, you know. People above me tell me what to do, it's not fun. And I go to work and my boss is telling me, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. Not fun, I like to go home, play the games, relax, de-stress, and it kinda, I don't know, I think games are good too because it helps with your hand-eye coordination, hopefully. Um, it helps with communication. If you're online, you get to talk to other people. Maybe you wouldn't talk to people as much during the day because you're just busy or you just don't really talk to people. Maybe you don't like people. But online is kind of anonymous, um, as we were talking about earlier, and you can talk to people. You can say whatever you want to say, and that's what makes me like games, so. Thank you. All right, Misha? Answer. And some gender choices here? I, um, it depends. 
on personally it depends on playthrough or and it depends usually on feeling. I mostly play female characters because I impress myself onto my avatar. Like I say, I, I'm the kind of person who gets lost in video games. Um, but, and for example, in the Bioware games, Mass Effect, Dragon Age, you can romance people. And I like to go through every single romance and a lot of the characters are locked by sexuality. So I will play a dude in order to get see maybe how he romances this other dude differently. I'll play or it, this chick differently than, you know, how someone else is. I feel like video games also, that's a good question, because I feel like it also gives you this different viewpoint where it's kind of shallow, but I think everybody here has wondered how, how it would be to walk in the shoes of the opposite gender for a little bit. Like, even though it's usually limited now to like just, you know, getting called sir or madam or, you know, something like that, but it's always this weird experience playing first as a female character and some characters treating you differently and then playing as a male character and they treat you seemingly as an equal sometimes and I sometimes get mad about that but you know it's just how it is. Yeah um, I think we're really on the verge of something really interesting when it comes to computer games and your question um, because historically I just haven't cared. I'm right in with Dr. Laughlin's camp with if it looks badass I like playing. Um, you know, so male, female, it, does, it really has never occurred to me. It's whatever I sort of button I happened to hit when I did a character generation in a particular MMO or whatever, but uh, it just never occurred to me to care because I don't identify really with the character. I don't impress my, I, I, you know, I can understand why some people flip out and when, on gender issues when uh, uh, it's an MMO and they're suddenly, that, you know, or let, uh, oh, you, even freakier for them, some Bioware game where, you know, that, oh yes, I think I'm command this character, character, and oh my god, a guy hit on me, and my character is a guy, and they freak out, you know, so uh, I do not impress my identity enough on a, some pixels on a screen to make that any different. But what I think is we're on the verge of seeing as, in fact, uh, more women are getting into uh, uh, doing the writing uh, for uh, the development of games is you can uh, start seeing in a few more niche games, but in the background, especially with some secondary characters in some AAA games, you see the writing getting so much better than it was even five or let alone 10 years ago that to actually have a female perspective in a game and have that mean something other than, yes, madam, you know, yeah. uh, you know, uh, 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 you know uh, where you're actually getting real characters, like, you know, some good solid literature would portray a female identity and a storyline, a viewpoint that's getting into games now. We are getting games where you can actually, the storytelling and the understanding of how to do that storytelling in a game, where you've got age, a player with agency involved in the process, the storytelling is getting so good that we can now say, you, we are getting to the point where games are coming out where I could actually choose male versus female and end up getting an experience that really is giving me something of a female take on whatever situation is occurring, at least as our society you know, experiences that gender relationship to the world and relationships, yada, yada, yada. It's getting real. And that really excites me, that the idea that you know, I could have this choice and it's not just you know, different pixels on the screen of that and you know, the identity, but I could really interact instead of, I can read great novels right now that tell me, that could probably teach me everything I could ever learn in my lifetime about what it is to be somebody other than my identity. But, and I can even talk to other people about that, so I can even inter interact with other people about that experience of reading that novel or whatever. But there's something about games, that, that agency, where you're making decisions 
and they're getting to the point where you could start identifying and you could get into that other person's skin and have it mean something in that game rather than, I hate to say this, that the reason why I was shaking my head earlier, if it, the camera catches it when you said romance and Bioware games, I mean, for reducing romance to like, I give you gift, so you will sleep with me. <laughs> Literally, I'm, I'm running up points by giving you these gifts and making these dialogues. It's like, that is not romance. Yeah. But real romance might start appearing and having a perspective. And so I'm actually kind of excited that, that que what, is, what is a good question is actually going to become really interesting soon. I hope it is. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> To answer your question, I prefer being the female characters because it's more of a challenge and when you kick ass, it really amplifies it. <laughs> like, nobody expects the girl character to suddenly come out and end up saving the person who was supposed to be the main hero from everything and it just, I don't know, it's like a euphoria you get from realizing that you just beat the odds. Can I ask you a question? Yes. And, and actually, I'd love this, the, if y'all, hopefully, or anyone out there, because I, I really am, I've heard all sorts of different things out there in the gaming society when it came out. Did any of y'all play Bayonetta, and what do you think of Bayonetta? 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 I'm thinking of ass-kicking women, but with questionable yeah, other things going on around. I gotta take the mic now. Bayonetta. I, I will say this, sir. I love Bayonetta. Okay. Like, like, Bayonetta, like, Bayonetta is possibly one of the best characterizations of making a woman sexual, but not sexualizing her, and I hope that isn't confusing to anyone. Bayonetta, if you guys haven't heard, is a, and I'm going to simplify this down, is basically about a witch, and uh, she casts spells by doing super kind of sexy dances <laughs> and with her super long hair, and her clothing is her hair, so sometimes her clothing, her clothing has to disappear in order for her to, her hair to morph into different things to kick ass. It's amazing, but I just loved Bayonetta because Bayonetta was strong, and she was not demeaned by her sexualization. Like it wasn't like it wasn't like sexualization. She was a sensual character. I think that's a better word to use it. She was a sensual character. When she danced to cast her spell, it was not for sexual purposes. It was to kick ass. Like, she was beating up. Like, and I, I will say this. I don't want anybody to get offended, but she was beating up angels. She was a witch that beat up angels. But they were bad angels. They were bad angels. They weren't, like, good angels. But to clarify. Yes. Like, she was doing it, and she was kicking ass. Like, I... I don't know how I got through a lot of like. Do you like specific? Do you remember the uh, fight? The just I've never played it. I You've never played it. Okay. I've never played it. I'm not into. I'm not into that style of game. Oh, okay, I'm, excuse I'm, me. Yeah. Like, like, I'm, 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 but I'm, I'm really curious. Yeah. Bayonetta. Who's Bayonetta? 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 Uh, Bayonetta? 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 Okay. Bayonetta? But she has this fight, and I don't really want to spoil anything. But it's about it's with this massive, massive, giant angel. And her finishing moves are a little bit quick time, and quick time events, just so everybody knows, is basically button mash, button mash, button mash, you win. Mm -hmm. But I have never been so impressed by watching something's eyes pop out of its head in my entire life. And my mom is probably going to see this and be horrified, but I'm 22, I can play those games now. And <laughs> Like she ever really paid attention to what <laughs> games I played, but anyway, it's just when you boil it down to like characters like Bayonetta who are sensual, who use their sensuality for their own upper hand, who fight with their sexuality, I feel that's different than, you know, like you said, with the chain mail bikinis. That isn't some that isn't trying to appeal to somebody sexually. That isn't like an avatar running around with their boobies bouncing around because, you know, physics and all of that. It's doing something, it's having agency, and I hope I don't sound just weird and ranty. It's just what it's, as a girl and as playing video games, and I kind of wish that one day 
my gender won't really influence anything with video games. I hope that by the time I'm 30, everybody's just going to be like, oh, you play video games? That's chill. <laughs> but seeing a character like Bayonetta, I feel like a lot of games need to make more Bayonettas. I feel like a woman, like women with their sexuality and stuff like that can own it. Like, and I, I'm going to, like, like, <laughs> I'm gonna like wrap this up, but who here has played Metal Gear Solid? You've played Metal Gear Solid. Do you know? Does anybody here know about Quiet? Oh. <laughs> now Quiet ha is a sniper in the newest and unfortunately last Metal Gear Solid game. Now Quiet has a disease. And her disease is essentially boiled down to she has a virus inside of her and she can only breathe through her skin. So this means she has to wear a bikini and like whole and very holy um, leggings, like um, nylon stockings. And um, because of this, she of course bounces when she kills things. And and That's when she, necessary. And when she's riding in helicopters. She's oh yes, she leans over in front of the uh, character. Just <laughs> yes. When uh, I would also like to point out, there's another character who has the exact same disease, and he wears like full body camo. But of course, when people ask Kojima about that, he was like, "Well, that's different." <laughs> there's actually a wonderful video. Uh, uh, I'm sure you can Google it on you, uh, through YouTube, where somebody took a male, the, uh, one of the male characters' models, mm -hmm. and put it into her all of her scenes doing that behavior yes. <laughs> with just the male character doing it instead of the female character, yes. and it reinforces just the, how well they're they're crazy in Japan. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of sad, and I will say this with. Like, a lot of sexualized characters come out of Japan. And I feel like that also rounds back to, like, Japanese culture and how they regard women and how they feel maybe about women. But I don't know. I've been talking too long. Yeah. Anybody else have something? Any other comments or questions? Did you have a comment? Japan is just beautiful. Yeah. 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 It is it's like, it is a different culture. To ours, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Hi, Brian. Dr. Gurmak, are there more women involved in board game design than uh, It was a couple of years ago, the first woman game designer won the Spiel Sharis with Locus. So, um, no, there's not a lot of women designing game, board games either. It's a very unusual thing. There are, however, a lot of women in um, uh, peripheral. Uh, there are more women who have credits on games, on board games, but not as design. It's very unusual. There are, I mean, there's some very famous games designed by women, but, or more likely men and women teams. But, um, I haven't seen the actual numbers, but I've also seen tabletop RPGs. Uh, they're designed, uh, the number of women involved in the process of skyrocketing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know that you've probably talked about this all night, and I really appreciate the time and energy of my participants and of our audience here. Um, I want to say just two things before we all conclude. Um, number one, I actually want to thank Dr. Brian. Um, for actually giving us the idea to move forward um, and talk about these issues in this Women's Studies Forum. So thank you very much, Dr. Ryan, for helping to, to get things going here. And number two, I want to see some gender creativity out there, right? Um, and maybe that's something that can encourage people to, you know, put themselves in other people's shoes or experiment and try new things. And so as you all go off, you're not going to go in experiment and be creative out there, right? And be nice and thoughtful people while you're doing that. <laughs> be nice, thoughtful, and competitive people while you do that. So thank you very much for everyone attending. And again, thank you to my panel for giving us your time and your energy and your ideas here. 
And if anyone wants to continue your talk, you will continue your talk amongst yourselves, or maybe talk to a panel, you come on up here. But otherwise, again, have a wonderful evening, and we hope to see you at the next Women's Study Symposium. Bye.